Okay. Okay. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining our webcast. We apologize for a little bit of technical difficulty we had with our presentation platform, but uh, I'm glad you could join us. So my name is David Vineski. I am a product marketing manager here at Infoblox, and um, we're going to have a webinar today about upgrading your network services. Uh, we're we'll going to talk about DNS security, uh, as well as the recently announced Trinsic Appliance Upgrade offer. So I'm going to I'm joined here by Sam Kumarsamy. Um, so Sam, um, you want to take a few seconds just introduce yourself. Yes. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be um, co-presenting with David Vanesky, and uh, I will be talking about DNS security, as David just pointed out. Okay. Thank you, Sam. So um, let's just do a quick review of the agenda. Uh, it's, short, it's a short agenda, um, and, uh, but we think it's good, uh, good material. So I'm going to do a very, very brief uh, uh, introduction on Infoblox. I think most of the attendees are Infoblox customers, so I'm going to spend a lot of time on that one. And then Sam will talk about DNS and threat protection, why it's critical, um, and, and what our solutions are. I'll then talk about the Intrinsic Upgrade Program kind of what it's about, some, some of the ins and the outs and the specifics of it. Uh, and then we'll kind of close it up with two steps. One is talking about the next steps, things you might do regarding either DNS security uh, and or the upgrade program. And then we'll um, do Q&A. Um, so uh, if you have any questions uh, along the way, please submit them using the, uh, using the chat feature. Uh, we'll compile them and look at them as we go and, and at the end um, address them all. If there are any questions that we can't address um, uh, verbally uh, during the webinar, we will get back to you, uh, as well as we will be sending out the slide deck as, uh, and some other pertinent information. So let me advance to the next slide and let Sam, oh, excuse me, let's, uh, let me not put, I'll hand it over to Sam, um, but let me just give you the quick introduction about Infobox. Again, uh, you're probably customers already, so you know we've been around since 1990, uh, 1999. Uh, we are the industry leader in uh, DNS, DHCP, and IP address management. What do we do? Why do we do all this? Why do we become the industry leader? It's because we deliver actual network intelligence so that you can control and secure your network from its, from its essence, from its core. Um, and that's what we're about. So now, uh, let, me t let me turn it over to Sam, uh, and he'll, be, and he'll uh, talk about uh, DNS security. Yes. Thank, thank you so much, David, for the introduction. And uh, one of the most ignored threat vectors is DNS. Why? Because it's not something that people typically focus on. And the reason for that is typically people are looking at web and email traffic and pretty much convinced that, hey, if they protect uh, at that layer or on that uh, level or threat vectors, such as email and web traffic, they pretty much are securing their uh, uh, organization. But lo and behold, if you look at statistics, especially from an infrastructure pr perspective, if your DNS is down, you cannot uh, have access to the Internet, for example, and you cannot do business outside. What that really means is uh, your service network as well as um, your applications become unavail un unavailable. So statistics have shown that uh, most of the application layers, as you can see here, 78% of the application layer attacks leverage DNS. And also 84% of reflection and ap um, amplification attacks use DNS. So that's a pretty large number. And as you can also see from the st statistics on the, right, um, on the top uh, uh, row, you know, about $500 is the uh, uh, per minute is the cost of down, downtime to due to a DDoS attack. You know, ex DDoS again stands for distributed denial of service attacks, and that can happen uh, through DNS. You know, you you can again protect your email traffic and web traffic, but if you do not uh, protect your DNS, it can cause some severe damage. And let's. Let's be honest, you know, when you talk about uh, DNS type of attacks such as DDoS, um, you, you are talking about loss of reputation, loss of customers, and then eventually loss of revenue for your business as well. 
So you really can't afford that. And you want to make sure that you're protected from DDoS and amplification reflection type of attacks that make your applications, network, and services unavailable. The second uh, statistic here in green also shows that over 46%, uh, and this is from an SC Magazine survey done back in 2015, is that um, 46% of the respondents experience some sort of a DNS-based data exfiltration. So again, you know, you, most of you have heard of DLP or data loss prevention, but that doesn't prevent loss of data or data exfiltration while using DNS. So again, very specifically, DNS-based uh, uh, data exfiltration has accounted for 46% uh, uh, according to respondents. And then 45% of the re survey respondents also said they've experienced some form of DNS tunneling. DNS tunneling is basically data exfiltration happening through known tunnels. So, uh, for example, that means using tools such as iodine or split brain known tools that are known to exfiltrate data using the DNS protocol or port 53. Um, so that's something you want to prevent as well because sensitive information being sent out, again, results in loss of revenue, loss of reputation, and, uh, you know, in, in lawsuits as well, especially in the case of HIPAA, PCI, and so on, all those regula regulatory compliances, you are in violation of if you do not prevent DNS-based data exfiltration. Added to, to that is 91% of the malware uses DNS to carry out campaigns. Okay, and these statistics I'm actually reading out because it really shows the importance of protecting DNS and the fact that it is often the most ignored threat vector because people do not focus on it. Now, if 91% of the malware uses DNS to carry out campaigns, the next step is the data exfiltration, right? So a lot of the data exfiltration leverages malware, okay? And that's the kind of conclusions that we're coming to based on the several surveys that, that you have seen and uh, that I talk about here. And then 431 million new types or new pieces of malware just in 2015. It's much larger based on 2016 statistics, but just, just goes to show you how valuable it is and how important it is to protect DNS. And it's the number one uh, malware uh, uh, responsible for crimeware, you know, the malware using DNS, by the way. Um, the other important thing is talking about threat intelligence. Now, threat intelligence, to describe it in brief, is knowledge that helps identify security threats and make informed decisions. So, you know, a threat intelligence could be knowledge about malicious IP addresses, domains, or URLs, for example. So having that intelligence is important and it needs to be as near real time as possible because a lot of the companies today have threat intelligence in silos, for example. You know, the finance department is using threat intelligence from internal sources and then you could have like your IT department using threat intelligence from uh, internal sources, open source or government data. Now it's important that not only are they timely, but they're not siloed because you want to typically have them in a centralized location so that you can more effectively manage threat intelligence and apply it across your organization, which is very important. That's why people have said 70% of the threat intelligence is not timely. If it's not timely, which means the bad IP addresses or URLs might have changed. They're no, they may not be bad any longer, for example, or malicious for that matter. And then 46% of the survey respondents, this is again a survey done by Ponemon Institute, so it's different survey and that's why I've indicated in different colors. And 46% of the respondents have, have said that they are unable to prioritize. So you might have all these threat intelligence, but then how do you prioritize it, right? And how do you have context on whether it's really bad or which one of them do you want to block or, or uh, prevent uh, communications with, right? And, and that for that, you need context and you need to be categorized. You know, is this high priority? 
So you should be you should have an ability to actually do some investigation and track back to where it's originating from. For example, maybe if it's a well-known uh, uh, do, uh, malicious domain originating from Russia, you need to be able to block that for sure because you know based on doing a threat investigation, going and looking back into the history that this has affected other organizations as well. So that's what I mean by uh, threat intelligence, and it needs to be effective. Effective meaning in terms of timeliness, in terms of prioritization, then in terms of context. Now, the typical answer you will get uh, uh, or, or, or uh, uh, defensively, hey, I already have. And you, you are, our customers might have uh, get might get the same feeling as well, is that hey, I already have a next generation firewall, I already have a secure web gateway, or I have a secure email gateway. Isn't that enough to block DNS? Now, while web gateways and email gateways are extremely important because again they definitely monitor, filter, and block malicious traffic coming through web and email, they definitely do not address DNS because they're not focused on DNS. However, it's very important to have these network security tools in your environment. But in addition to that, let's not forget the DNS layer, right? Because it is needed in addition to your firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, web gateways, secure gateways, uh, uh, email gateways and so on, because it, you need to protect the port 53, and that's extremely important. Interestingly, uh, Infoblox has, as uh, David pointed out, uh, interesting background on, uh, because we lead the market in DDI, or DNS, DHCP, and IP management. So our history is, starts with the core of the network because that is the fundamental of any network. And then what we have done is we have added on security to our fundamental basic core network uh, 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 intelligence. And that's uh, something we want to really emphasize. And we believe because we have such a deep knowledge and context from the network, we extend that to uh, our security uh, solutions, which also includes products such as Infoblox Advanced DNS Protection. And what we do better than the next generation firewalls or the uh, load balancing or uh, 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 load balancers, intrusion prevention systems, and so on, is we defend against the widest range of DNS-based attacks, both external and internal, while maintaining the DNS uh, service and network availability. That's the beauty. We can do that in parallel while blocking the different types of attacks that come externally, the DDoS, the, D, uh, the reflection amplification, the uh, flood-based attacks, even data exfiltration through known tunnels that I talked about, such as um, uh, using tools such as iodine and split brain, DNS-based hijacking, reconnaissance, cache poisoning, and protocol anomalies. The widest range, both external and internal, that is authoritative and reflective. And um, three key takeaways is really reducing the DNS service disruption. And uh, I, I will be talking a little more about it, how we do it is we, we do it on a software subscription product, which we call as advanced DNS protection, and it's available both on virtual and physical appliances. And those appliances are something that David Vanesky will expand on, but for the moment, you know, it's just a software download. We can enable that. Or if you want dedicated appliances, we have what we call as PT appliances, which we can provide as well to prevent or to provide you protection against the widest range of DDoS, amplification, reflection, both external and internal based attacks. The second takeaway is we adapt, we adapt to evolving threats. So, you know, the threats have, uh, um, are happening as we talk and they're constantly evolving. And 
we can protect your DNS servers against new and evolving threats with a prepackaged set of threat protection rules. That's how we do it. Threat Adapt, te threat adapt technology is a technology that we use to provide the updates over the cloud. But some of the means we provide is, is the prepackaged set of threat protection rules that are already comes loaded when you purchase our solution. And then also the latest threat intelligence. Uh, uh, we focus on analysis and research. We have a threat team based out of uh, uh, Tacoma in Seattle. We have a cyber intelligence unit that is actually doing their own research and analysis. And they update that, the latest information based on new threats they see in customer networks, for example. And then also we obtain the latest threat feeds by leveraging the Threat Adapt technology. So it's a combination of our own internal research, and then we also pro get feeds because, you know, you want to be up to date on the latest threats uh, or the malicious bad sites that are uh, crea creating all these types of DDoS attacks. Last but not the least is we utilize data for threat management. So we have a centralized uh, uh, console from which you can actually look at the different sources and patterns of attacks. So we can do it in every 30-minute intervals, as well as historical information, which is every 24 hours, we can actually keep track on all the different types of attack patterns that are happening. So you need that kind of visibility and we have info blocks reporting and analytics that help with that kind of information reporting because you 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 cannot fix what you cannot see and that visibility is provided by our reporting and analytics and you can actually look at you know based on the severity of of the rule set that, that are being affected and then even pass it on to a sim vendor as well because you want that integration with an existing sim because a lot of our customers we have heard back is they manage a lot of these events uh, and signatures from a central location such as a SIM. Now, I want to highlight because if you are an existing Trinsic customer, uh, one of the existing TE 815, 825, or 1415, we actually support both uh, VMware and KVM on virtual appliances. So we have support for both. And also on physical appliances, we can provide the support. The benefit of this is it's a single download. So if you are an existing, uh, if you have one of these existing Trinsic boxes, it's just a simple download of our software ADP product on that. It's a single SKU. So you can leverage your existing investments. You don't have to have a forklift upgrade because, you know, previously we used to provide PT appliances, separate dedicated appliances for advanced DNS protection. But now with the software, you can simply upgrade your existing Trinsic, one of these existing Trinsic boxes and enable software ADP. And then this is that flexible deployment options. Either it's a virtual machine or a physical machine you can download the software onto. While I talk about that software ADP, because at the current moment we have limited performance uh, in terms of queries per second, the software ADP supports up to 50,000 queries per second. If you want anything higher, we recommend right now dedicated appliances called PT appliances. And these PT appliances, you know, they come in different uh, uh, forms, like 1405, 2205, and PT4000 as well, and these all have in increased queries per second or performances. Now, these advanced appliances are only uh, available in physical format. They're not uh, available as virtual format, and they, and they offer both AC and DC power supply outputs. So that's something to remember versus just upgrading the software ADP. In, in within six to seven months, we will also have software ADP on the higher intrinsic appliances. So you now will have an option of either having a dedicated appliance or just a software ADP on existing intrinsic appliances. So, so that's the 
advanced DNS protection. And if you want to get started, you can actually request a free ADP evaluation on this particular website. So we have a 30-day evaluation. Obviously, the SC of our company needs to get involved because he, he needs to determine what, what your particular requirements are. So if you as a customer want to evaluate, we do want to get our SEs involved to do the care and feeding and ensure you are evaluating the right type of appliance from a capacity and performance perspective. And to learn more, please visit the Advanced DNS Protection product page. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, to get, to get more information. The next uh, um, a product I want to talk about is the data exfiltration and malware mitigation product. We have an on-prem version called the Active Trust which we can use to proactively detect and prevent cyber attacks on users. And what I mean is, uh, by that is, we have like four clear value propositions uh, from uh, emanating from, uh, 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 from active trust. The first and foremost is you can prevent DNS-based data exfiltration and malware communications. So uh, we do that by using a product called DNS Firewall, right, in order to prevent malware communication, because everything needs to be controlled from the DNS control plane. We also have a product called Threat Insight, which basically can be, uh, is offered in the cloud. Now that comes bundled with Active Trust, and I'll talk a little more about the tiers. But the important thing to remember here is we can actually prevent DNS based data exfiltration, and malware communications. We can centrally manage and distribute it uh, and distribute curated threat intelligence. I talked about the th importance of threat intelligence being uh, collected at a central location and aggregated and curated so that you don't have any false positives and being able to distribute that to your security ecosystem. So we have something called the TIDE platform or threat intelligence data exchange. And this is a combination of our own internal data as well as from third parties such as CrowdStrike, FishMe, uh, Serbal, and so on. We have about seven to eight partnerships. So we can actually leverage third party data because we want to be kind of the best of breed. We do uh, understand no single uh, security vendor can provide uh, a, a solution to all your needs but what we want to do is be that central exchange of information, of threat intel data, and be able to curate it as well using our own internal team, which we call as the Cyber Intelligence Unit, which we have based out of Tacoma, Washington. So we also can provide rapid threat investigation. So actually look at the different threats and prioritize that for you based on investigation. For example, if this URL coming from Russia, then you need to be able to go in and see, hey, there are other organizations affected by this particular IP address. And if they have all deemed it bad, that history shows up. And be able to do that quickly using a centralized tool, which we call as infoblocks.ca. And then furthermore, I talked about the sharing of information directly from type, but we can also convert that data into a, a format called response policy zones, which are easily digestible, which are easily, very easily digestible by our DNS firewall. So from there, you can actually distribute the DNS indicators of compromise to your third party as well. So there are two forms of uh, sharing with the ecosystem, one directly from TIE, and another one directly from our DNS firewall as well. And that's what we call by rapid threat investigation and triage. And then streamlining security operations here is again using the fact that we actually help to quickly remediate because if you can prioritize the threats and give you the indicators of compromise, you can leverage that into your Qualys, for example, and do a quick scan or rapid seven to see, hey, if your endpoints or if any of your new devices are compliant with the company's policies. 
So when I talk about active trust, we have it in three different uh, tiers, and I want to quickly go through that. Um, the, the basic version standard is for, for basically targeted at network buyers, where they just want prevention, just the DNS firewall to prevent malware communications with CNC sites. Um, there's no, you won't get any, uh, 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 the, the tight platform, uh, which is very important from a threat intelligence perspective, and you won't get dossier, which is a threat investigation tool. But however, if you subscribe for plus, and advanced, you will get additional feeds, some third-party feeds, and more importantly, the threat insight in the cloud, which is basically a tool that can prevent DNS-based data exfiltration. And it can use both reputation as well as behavioral analytics in order to ensure there are no zero-day type of data exfiltration happening. When I say zero-day in near real time, where DNS is used to exfiltrate chunks of data. It can actually read into the packets and determine if sensitive data is being sent out. And for that, uh, you need Threat Insight in the cloud. And as you can see, only the, the plus and the advanced versions include the Threat Insight in order to prevent DNS-based data exfiltration. And then, you know, obviously, depending on the number of uh, the which tier you're subscribing to, you can, you're limited by the number of queries per year uh, uh, based on whether you're subscribing for plus or advanced. To learn more, uh, you can actually do a free evaluation of Active Trust. It's available for 30 days, so you can go to our website and download the free evaluation. Again, uh, you're not compelled to uh, try any, uh, buy anything just out of the box. You want to try it and make sure it's the right fit. You can try all three versions. I highly recommend trying the plus and advanced versions because of the additional threat intelligence and the fact you get uh, DNS-based data exfiltration prevention as well. To learn more about Active Trust, please visit our Active Trust product page. You can actually go into infoblocks.com and look at our product section, and then you can learn more. Uh, we have detailed solution notes. A data sheet, and so on as well. With that, back to you, David. Great. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate, uh, appreciate all that information. So uh, I'm going to talk about the Trinsic Upgrade Program. Um, so just a little backstory, uh, if you're unfamiliar. About a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, Infoblox, uh, Infoblox announced uh, and launched a new generation of Trinsic Appliances the physical appliances as well as the virtual appliances. And uh, the quick way to see uh, new generation versus not new is the new generation um, appliances end in a five. If you're interested in the various uh, performance differences, uh, and Sam alluded to some of those, uh, you can take a look at our data sheet on the website, and there's a comparison of queries and leases per second, and you can see how much faster the new appliances are versus the old. Um, so that's what happened. Um, about a year ago. About six weeks ago, we rolled out a special program uh, to help people uh, upgrade from their existing Trinsic appliances to this new generation. So why do we do this? Well, we've been to the, uh, uh, we've been to the upgrade movie before. Uh, we were actually uh, actors in it, and we kind of know some of the issues that have come up. Um, uh, some of the questions that, uh, that we heard, um, well, we're hoping to have, uh, allow you to never have to ask them again. Uh, we have people asking us things like, oh, another appliance refresh debate. Um, when's it going to be, that, when, when the next one going to be, five years from now, seven years from now, a year and a half from now? Um, can I get networking efficiency and security without breaking the bank? Uh, a pricing question. Uh, what if I want a platform uh, that, uh, uh, that's, uh, that is expandable down the road? We'll have to re-architect re the entire Intelwog's DDI deployment to do that. Or really, can I avoid that? And then a very common question is moving to the cloud. Uh, will Infobox or any vendor for that matter, can they shift their, pro their product to pricing model to, to conform to that direction? Well, the answer is I think for us, um, we're trying to make them really simple. Number one, um, the virtual, the, or excuse me, the appliance refresh debate is going to be virtually eliminated uh, based on this program. Uh, number two, you can optimize and secure your network 
by spending about as much money on maintenance today uh, uh, on, on, so, uh, on subscription software. Uh, and I might note that when we launch the new gen the next generation or the current the new generation of terms of appliances, at the same time we launch subscription software pricing too. Number three, uh, yes, you'll have sufficient resources um, uh, to support advanced services. Uh, that's what these that's what these new appliances bring to the table. And uh, yes, we are moving towards cloud and cloud-like economics uh, with our pricing model for um, for uh, intrinsic software. So those are a couple of the foundational points for this upgrade program. So what's the offer about? Um, we call it kind of simply uh, in marketees, no excuses, no compromises, and unbeatable savings. And that's what um, uh, that's what we're bringing to you here. And we're doing it by extending the power of DDI DDI services with exceptional value and additional flexibility. So the extended power comes from uh, our services as well as the new appliances. The value comes with some pricing um, changes that we've made, and the flexibility comes through our subscription, um, subscription license offer. So this is um, what I call, for lack of a better term, the money slide uh, when, I, when we talk about the upgrade offer. Um, and let me run through it, because uh, this kind of captures the important points. Who's eligible? Um, number one, current transit users. Uh, if you have transit appliances uh, and if they're under a maintenance agreement, you're, you're able to, you're able to uh, take advantage of the offer that I'll be describing here. Uh, and you will be upgrading from the first generation intrinsics to the current generation. That is, that is the focus of this offer. Uh, the advantages are uh, highly attractive pricing. I'll get into that in a, uh, in a, in a slide or two, um, but uh, there, are, there are real economics to doing this. Um, lowest cost because we're using a subscription model. And a, and a subscription model by its nature allows you to move upfront spending out um, and move some CapEx into OpEx. One of the things our customers have talked about is and told us that they need is uh, shifting money from the CapEx budget to the OpEx budget. Um, this includes, uh, and our, soft, our subscription model includes soft software, up, uh, soft software updates and maintenance. So there'll be there's no longer a need for a software maintenance agreement. Um, hardware is separate, but for software maintenance, it is included in the software software subscription. What does that also give you? Predictable spending down the road, and uh, because you're because you're upgrading, you'll be using them uh, our most powerful appliances. The subscription license that we're speaking about here, moving to the bottom left corner, um, the nature of the offer is uh, you'll, you, you will license uh, not only DDI, but you get to license our DNS traffic control, DTC, Active Trust, which Sam spoke about, um, advanced DNS protection, which Sam also talked about, as well as the reporting and analytics module. We look at this combination of services. Um, DTC, DNS, reporting analytics, and active trust on top of DDI that we see as the new extended core services for modern networks. DDI is obviously important. It, it, it enables the network to work, but securing the network and optimizing the network, managing the network, um, these particular services make that happen. So, we, so we've included that in the software. And finally, just some basic terms. Um, uh, there is a there is an, an end to this. You you have to take advantage of this by July 31st, 2018. So it's not right around the corner. You actually have a lot of time to consider it, but uh, you do in fact have to act by July 31st. Um, because this is a, it's a subscription, there's a term involved. The term could be one year, two years, three years, four years, or five. Your choice. Uh, and uh, note that it applies to physical, virtual, as well as cloud appliances. Not just it doesn't it is a simply physical appliance. So what are we doing here? Again, so let's start out extending the power of DDI. What what are we offering? Network optimization. We, we want to give you visibility and reporting and or manageability as well as application load balancing. And we can do application load balancing with our DNS traffic control. Um, it performs the global load server balancing without the need for extra hardware. So you save money. Uh, you save money doing that, and you get um, tremendous insight, uh, as well as ad hoc and uh, off-the-shelf reporting through our reporting analytics, analytics module. Security, uh, advanced DNS protection, and active trust. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that in, in the first half of this presentation. I don't, I don't need to go through that again, except to say that um, 
Securing and network security is, a, is an issue and a challenge that's going to be with us for the foreseeable future. So addressing it now is a pretty good idea. And last, again, the latest appliances, um, the power and capacity. Roughly speaking, 50%, uh, excuse me, 100% more power uh, versus, the, versus the original first generation intrinsic appliances. And what does this do for you? It allows you to add future capabilities without affecting the core, the most core DDI services. So it gives you headroom, think of it that way. That's what these appliances are giving you, their headroom to employ these other services. So why, these, why this particular combination of DDI plus DPC plus Active Trust and, uh, uh, and ADP and reporting? Um, we think it's just a very synergistic and integral combination for a, for a modern network. Um, this, this, it, these are the tools that uh, customers are telling us will be going forward. The appliances, um, I won't spend a lot of time on hardware. Again, we've got great data sheets to look at this, but uh, what's the benefit to you? No impact to DDI performance. Right? When you use these advanced network services, that's why they're there. Uh, 50, excuse me, 50% 50 greater uh, queries per second and license uh, and licenses per second performance. And note this, they do fit into any grid running uh, uh, running a current intrinsic appliance. So it's not a, it's not a total uh, rip and replace um, um, situation. The value is the value. Okay, to get all these services and accelerate and accelerated savings. Um, I'm not going to quote you a particular percent discount or percent savings versus um, uh, versus our current pricing because that's extremely configuration dependent. That's a conversation that you want to have with your sales rep. Um, but we we did some basic modeling, uh, and if you look at a perpetual license for uh, for these services versus the subscription license and the special discount we're offering before July 31st. It's <clears throat> pardon me, at least a 25% savings over the course of five years. So um, not a trivial amount of money. And finally, flexibility. <clears throat> and this is this is the essence of, or you know, this is the, the reason for being when it comes to subscription licenses. You know, what is what are the subscription license? What does the subscription license model do for you? Uh, number one, it gives you the ability to move the license from a physical appliance to a virtual appliance in the cloud at no incremental cost. So if you are using physical appliances today, if that's the configuration that makes sense, but you want to go virtual, go ahead and do it. Take our software with you, no incremental cost from us. That's what the, that's what that license allows. Um, because it's an OPEX model, and it, it, it gives you the ability, uh, within the constraints of your own uh, accounting rules, to apply your maintenance budget to software subscriptions. So if you're looking to do that CapEx to OPEX kind of transition, this, um, this pricing model certainly helps. Yeah, I mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning again. So the subscription model includes all software updates and new features. No, no special maintenance agreement required. So you'll always be on the cutting edge. Um, uh, with our capabilities, and finally, because of the um, the net, um, I don't know, you might, you might call it bite size pricing, or, or the ability to have a, a lower entry price for our for our uh, DDI and extended solutions, uh, it makes it makes the our product uh, suitable to both production environments where we, where we typically play, as well as trial networks, proof of concepts, and DevOps networks. Um, the price point uh, the price point now makes us um, a lot more flexible. So kind of summary um, in big letters and big bullets, um, what's it all about? Uh, exceptional value. Right? We're offering you capabilities, savings, and flexibility. Um, lowest entry point um, compared to our perpetual license pricing, uh, uh, there's a much easier way to get into intrinsic appliances using this offer. Uh, most powerful appliances, right? We're upgrading to the latest, the latest gen of Trinsics. The days of painful technology refreshes are behind us using this offer because you're always up to date. And um, yes, I have to say this because I have a bit of salesman in me. This is a limited time offer. Uh, you do need to act quickly. So finally, next steps. Um, we're going to be sending out uh, some of these URLs, but um, so, you can, so the, the goal here to learn more is actually a, uh, a page on our website, which, which gives you some more details on the upgrade program. Um, you can contact your sales rep or your channel partner to talk about this particular upgrade program. They've all been they've all been informed and trained on it. 
uh, and, they're, and they're all standing by to discuss the particular needs and give you a sentence quote uh, if that's, if that's uh, uh, of your interest. So um, let's talk about, uh, let's see if there are any questions from the audience. Um, and we've had, a, we've had a few come in. They kind of hopscotch back and forth between the, the upgrade offer and ADP. So look at this. let me start with one for me, and then I got a couple for Sam. Um, first question is, why are, are these particular software modules, and that would be Active Trust and, uh, and ADP and DTC and reporting, why are they included in the upgrade offer? Um, it's, uh, it's again, as, um, as I mentioned earlier, we think that going forward, uh, networks have to be secure, uh, and these are your networks. And you have to, you'll have to keep your network secure. You'll have to optimize them. You'll need, you'll need very um, fine-grained or granular insight as to, as to what's going on, how they can be managed. And these particular modules allow you to do that. Um, so uh, that's why we created this special um, bundle uh, for this upgrade offer. Next question is relates to ADP, uh, so it's for you, Sam. Um, which version of NIOS is required for software ADP? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, so our support for the Trinsic 800 series and 1400 series, our initial support for software ADP is enabled on NIOS 8.1. And um, uh, 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 just to kind of give a, a brief uh, roadmap, the higher-end appliances will be supported. The goal, again, in the roadmap, which could change, is March-April timeframe of next year. We'll be supporting it on NIOS 8.4 for the higher-end 1400, 2200, and the 4000 series. But um, for this particular um, um, uh, 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 upgrade program, I believe it's NIOS 8.1, which will be supported, which will support software ADP on the 800 and the 1400 series. Great, thank you. Um, here's, a, here's another one from uh, for you, Sam. It's a little, a little, uh, a little general. Um, how is how is the ADP solution packaged? So that's kind of a general uh, question, right? Well, it's packaged in the sense that, you know, you have that protection against both external and inter widest range of external and internal um, uh, DNS-based attacks. It's packaged in two ways, like I mentioned, for, but for this particular program, software ADP is the way to go. So if you have Trinsic appliances, the 815, 825, or the 1415, the best way to go is to download the software. It's a single SKU, and you're off and running. You have ADP enabled. And the thread feeds that I talked about, they're being updated by using a technology called Threat Adapt technology that comes packaged uh, with a prepackaged set of threat protection rules that are being constantly updated by our threat research team. So. Uh, it comes packaged, all of that, the threat feed, the ADP software, uh, um, and the support and maintenance for that is all packaged in that one single SKU, which you can download onto one of the Trinsic boxes that I talked about, the 815, 825, and 1450. Great. Um, we've got a couple questions here about the upgrade program. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just make note that the... Uh, the Q&A window is open, so if, you, if anyone in the audience wants to submit a question, feel free. Um, question comes: um, Can I can I still can I still procure or buy uh, NIOS and the other software modules for the Trinsic? Uh, uh, excuse me. Can I still procure NIOS and the other modules for the new Trinsic appliances with a perpetual license? The answer is absolutely. Um, we are we are not we are not not selling the perpetual licenses uh, anymore. Um, those are those are absolutely out there for uh, for anyone to buy. Uh, we are just um, we are just making a special offer based on a, subs on a subscription license model because customers are telling us that's the direction they're going. Um, but that perpetual license is absolutely a, a, an option for anyone. There's another question that says if I want a, if I want a subscription license, a different combination of soft, software modules than the ones you showed, 
do I still qualify for the special offer? Um, the special offer, I assume you mean the special pricing. The answer is at th the answer is at this point in time, no. Um, just for for reasons of efficiency, um, uh, we needed to we needed to draw a line uh, around a certain set of modules uh, so that it could be easily orderable and easily and easily deliverable uh, and still have a uh, have a program that we can we can market and describe uh, in a clear and concise excuse me a clear and concise manner. So so at this point in time. It's the modules that I described earlier, um, DDI, uh, Active Trust, ADP, um, uh, DNS traffic control, and reporting and analytics. That is the combination of modules that qualifies for the special offer. So currently, our last question is, how often, and this is, this is a question for you, uh, Sam, um, how often do the automatic rule, uh, how often do the automatic rule updates happen? on the advanced PT and software-enabled um, ADP uh, appliances? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so it happens, typically we pull every 24 hours uh, uh, the, the updates from our uh, server, and we make sure that uh, uh, the protection rules are updated. But the threat feeds, you know, that we, uh, that we get, both from our internal research as well as using the threat adapt technology that's in near real time. So it's a combination, our own threat protection rules, you know, we ensure that we pull that data every 24 hours, but the threat feeds uh, on the latest, you know, um, types of attacks that have happened, that happens as soon as we get an update, uh, you know, it happens in near real time, we get updated within the next uh, 30 minutes or so. So that's almost near real time. And, and we have one late question come in from the audience, and the question is, what if we currently have an IB820, excuse me, let me read it in English. What if we currently have IB820 appliances? Uh, and I assume the question behind that is, do we qualify for an upgrade? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and the answer is, uh, yes, you do. Um, 820 appliances can, be, uh, can certainly, certainly, certainly be upgraded. Uh, what you want to talk to again your sales rep or channel partner, whoever your whoever your close interface was, to uh, uh, to choose the proper next uh, next um, um, appliance. Pardon me, uh, but uh, absolutely you, uh, you qualify. Uh, and uh, let me add one other point of clarification um, before I believe Heather may want to ask something or uh, talk to the audience. Um, uh, if you have a number of appliances, and I'll just pick a number. Uh, out of the hat, uh, let's say you have six appliances today, and, and you and you want to upgrade to six new Trinsics. You do not have to. You do not have to buy um, the full package of software modules for all six appliances. As long as you as long as you buy the soft, the, the the suite of software modules for at least one of those appliances, you do qualify. Uh, so so it's it's not like you have to peanut butter all all software modules overall appliances. Um, just, just wanted to make that point of clarification. So um, that's uh, that we, we've now exhausted our questions. Um, uh, and uh, Heather, did we need to cover any, do we have any housekeeping issues or are we set to go? And I'm going to assume silence means the answer is no. So um, I want to thank everybody for attending the webinar. I apologize for our initial technical difficulties, but uh, thank you for coming. And uh, we will be sending out some information, follow-up follow information to all of you. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, David.